Welcome to Small Talk, where each week we sit down to discuss the sermon-based small group questions at Wallula Christian Church. Well, hello and welcome to uh, Small Talk. We're excited that you're joining us again for our conversation surrounding a few of the small group questions here at Wallula Christian Church as we work our way through our uh, this sermon series that we're currently in called Grow Up Big and Strong. We've been uh, working our way through Hebrews chapter 5 and 6, and so we're at the tail end of Hebrews chapter 5 today, and uh, just uh, some interesting verses, uh, verses that are packed full of, of things. There's there's a whole bunch that we could talk about, and we're going to do our best to answer a yeah. few of these questions here as we think about how we can grow up spiritually. Mm-hmm. And uh, we're, we're going to start just uh, kicking around this this uh, icebreaker question that asks, are there any foods that you refuse to eat as a kid that you enjoy today? Are there any foods that you still enjoy eating today, even though the food is less than sophisticated because it reminds you of your childhood? <laughs> Anything? Are you going back to those? You know, when I think of that, things that kids eat that uh, I've, I've told this story before, You know, I used to help, uh, they had this program called, uh, what was it called, Guard Dogs or something like that. Oh, Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's not called Guard Dogs, but dads that would go into the Mm -hmm. grade schools and... The middle school Haley used to teach at, they called it Watch Dogs. Watch Dogs is what it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And so, uh, (laughs) yeah, a little more... A little more friendly than guard dogs, <laughs> yeah. although that was part of the point, right? right? Yeah, I remember walking around the building. You know, you were supposed to do a mm. perimeter check or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. That sounds very official, but uh, anyway, in <laughs> uh, part of the duties w- w- would uh, be to hang out in the lunchroom, and uh, this was at a time. I don't know if these are still a thing, but the gogurts, which uh, were yeah. yogurt in a tube. You know, my kids and, haven't gotten into those. Yeah, don't. We do the it's, cup. With yeah, the spoon. sure. Yeah, like humans. <laughs> right. Yeah. Just <laughs> yeah. slurping good, it up. Good choice. <laughs> yes. Because there'd be these little, you know, five, six, seven year old kids who would have these plastic tubes filled mm-hmm. with yogurt and unable to tear off the top, right. you yeah. know, to gain access. And so they'd be waiting for somebody to help them. And as they're waiting, there some some of them. <laughs> Just gnawing on the right. yeah, you gotta and, use and, your and, teeth. Yeah. And so chewing it up, and it's just, it, it, will you open this now? And you're like, ha huh, ha. Huh, yeah, <laughs> sure. Sanitize your hands. Yeah, yeah, terrible. But I think of things like that with kids that you're like, yeah. really? We need to slurp this out of a tube to make it more fun? Is that, is, there's no more health benefits here? Or, right. Or uh, I remember, uh, I was never into this too much, but lots of kids playing baseball growing up, you know, concession stand at the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And one of the things the concession stand would sell, I think it was just called Fun Dip. Fun Dip. You know what I'm talking about I was about into here. that when I was a kid. Is that right? And yeah. I remember watching these kids, and I just never, I'm like, why are we doing this? To you know, really, it was, Yeah. When you really do think about yeah. what you were doing. Right. Dipping the little sugar stick it was like a more sugar it was like a piece of chalk yeah that that it didn't taste like that part no taste good but it was like a stick of chalk just that they left over from the school year (laughs) they packaged it in the sugar and they shipped it off to sell at concession stands with kids and so that's what i think of less sophisticated food these just you know we're just chewing sugar (laughs) off a piece of chalk and And yeah like you're you're this special treat to yeah. get more sugar, just yeah, yeah. yes, it's an odd thing with your slobber. I right. mean that—that's the adhesive here, right? Yes, <laughs> the <laughs> adhesive to get the sugar to stick is just your spit. So, but it's fun. Yeah, it's fun dip. Yeah, it's fun dip. <laughs> right, right. So, anything like that in your life? Craig? Well, yeah. There, I mean, as far as f- foods that I did not want to eat, but eventually ended up enjoying, pineapple is one of them. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I used to get weird looks, you know, high school, college, when I'm just mm-hmm. like, I don't really like pineapple. Hmm. And then, you know, I just didn't have it for a long time. Right. And it would get mixed in with like a fruit mix stuff. You know, mm-hmm. you get the whole mm-hmm. gamut of fruit. And when, every once in a while, I would eat it if it was mixed in with stuff. Right. And then eventually I was like, this isn't so bad. One day, mm-hmm. you know, something happens and 
yeah you just end up liking pineapple again right at, for the first time i guess right. so that was that's a thing there are yeah. some things that i'm waiting on like coconut yeah i've never been a fan of coconut just waiting on it so maybe someday <laughs> i'm gonna eat coconut and say this isn't so bad right i don't know i don't know how that happens yeah. but yeah that's one thing but yeah i i asked Haley because i maybe you're blind to things like this sometimes mm -hmm. that Sure. You don't think about it being unsophisticated. Mm -hmm. So I said, what foods do I like that, you know, is from right. my past or something, yeah. and I still keep eating it? Right. And she said it, and I immediately thought, yeah, you're right. Funyuns. Oh, yeah. There you go. Funyuns oh, yeah. are great. Mm -hmm. And, it, like, I, you yeah. know, I yeah. discovered them probably when I was in middle school or something. Right. And I was yeah. like, these yeah. are amazing. And yeah. then you just, you know... You eat as many as you can. That's right. There and you go. Uh, I remember when when Haley and I were engaged. I was living in Manhattan. She was living at her uh, parents' house in Tonganoxie, or Linwood, I guess. But mm -hmm. she was student teaching, so she moved back home and did that semester at home. So I would drive back and forth. Right. And and this is when I started working. And my my weekend routine when I'd visit her is get a bag of Funyuns. Right. And hit there the road. Go. Yeah. And so it's just continued into adulthood i guess but yeah yeah bag of onions can't bag go wrong of, yeah unsophisticated <laughs> in, right and these way. little yeah little yeah. corn rings dusted right. in onion powder there are no real I food guess. at all yeah. i mean there's no yeah <laughs> there's no value to it yeah, yeah. <laughs> for your body no, yes <laughs> it's just all created in a lab somewhere <laughs> and uh we will consume it. So, That's right. Yeah, Funyuns. There you go. Yeah, I think the pineapple thing, you know, as a kid, I only remember eating pineapple out of a can. Oh, yeah. You, you know, so you'd get those pineapple rings. Right. You know, for s certain kind of recipe or something. Maybe mom put that in, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, Or the fruit, uh, you know, the combination fruit. Yeah. salad stuff mm -hmm. and you'd get little pieces of pineapple yeah yeah so that's what i remember as a kid now if you eat fresh pineapple that really is a game changer there and i think that was kind of the game sure changer. yeah because even yeah like for our kids we'll buy like those little fruit cups and the pineapple ones right those yeah aren't good no you don't but want yeah, that fresh pineapple right that's a does difference. make a difference yeah yeah that's a game changer yeah. and so you can eat that yeah <laughs> yeah i'm with you I think I've told the bulk of my food stories. Really, I don't. I don't. Uh, I don't know if I have anything new to share. Nothing to hide here. Yeah, I have nothing to hide. I, I would say unsophisticated things. You know, sometimes it's like uh, you know, I will buy a package of bologna to have a bologna mm. sandwich. Yeah, and uh, we. I don't. We don't buy this often. It's not a staple in our house any right. longer, right? Maybe when we were kids, uh, you know, school lunches or whatever. And that sort of thing. Uh, but bologna's not a staple in our house. But once in a while, it's like, oh, man, I really yeah. I want a bologna sandwich. And so you buy a, a – I, I shouldn't say you. I'm not blaming this on anybody else, folks. All right? <laughs> this is just Lance confession time. <laughs> but uh, you buy a package of bologna. And uh, so you buy the bologna, and you have to have, you know, the white bread, like yeah. Wonder Bread or whatever right. yeah, to yeah. go with it. So this is along the same lines as – Funyuns probably. We're creating this lunch in a lab. And yes. so bologna yeah. on with American cheese, you know. You know yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to if if you have to unwrap every part of the sandwich. <laughs> yes. That's what and the so, texture's a little iffy. Yeah. So maybe un unsophisticated is an appropriate term there. I don't know. But I, I thought of bologna sandwiches. Once in a while you just think, Oh, I want a bologna sandwich. Yeah. And I'm not sure why that happens to me yeah. but uh it does mm -hmm. yeah uh and uh driving back and forth from uh bartlesville there in independence kansas there is a big cheese pizza have you ever eaten at a big cheese pizza mm, i don't think so yeah so growing up there's a big cheese pizza in topeka that i remember eating at and and so i'm driving through independence and every time i drive past this i think I want to stop at this big cheese pizza sometime. I want to have. I it's been ages, right? You know, since I was a kid, and uh, that I've had big cheese pizza, 
And uh, I think I want to stop there sometime. And and so that's on my bucket list someday. You know, I, <laughs> you're just driving to and from. And yeah. so it's just, you know, I've never stopped there. And I don't remember the pizza being like, oh, this is worth the yeah. stop or anything. Right. It's just, I remember the nostalgia. big cheese from when I was a kid. Yeah, I never so. heard of it. There, there's probably a reason that the only one I know that exists today <laughs> is in the Independence, strong. Kansas. So that's crazy. Yeah, I don't know. So anyway, yeah, sometimes uh, things stand out and remind us of our our childhood, and and sometimes you know we you know, tastes can change and mature, and and things we we wouldn't touch as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, oh yeah. And that that's pretty good you know yeah. that, that has some value in our life and and some things that we eat as a kid that we are like we we need to leave that in our our childhood mm-hmm. you know so uh we need to grow up and uh, that's true physically and uh it's certainly true spiritually and so that's really what we want to talk about a little bit as we uh, dive into Hebrews chapter 5, uh, there are just a few verses, so I'm going to read them for us as we v- revisit Hebrews chapter 5, verses 11 through 14. They say, About this we have much to say, and it's hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature. For those who have their powers of discernment trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. All right, some interesting verses there. And uh, one of the things we talked about was just uh, were some of the obstacles to growing in Jesus, some of the obstacles that maybe we experience in growing up spiritually. And and uh, so this question asks, what obstacle do you find most dangerous and why? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I guess uh, I think this is a good question because on Sunday, one of the main things you talked about was how technology yeah. is a distraction or an sure. obstacle. And I think we can even take that a little bit further because I was thinking about that and you were talking about um, like the physical distraction, physical distraction that it could mm-hmm. be like having your phone sitting on the table right. as you're trying to focus during a quiet time right? and you get that notification uh, and like even I have a, a smart watch, you know, yeah. so even that sure. you have to, right. sometimes I've just taken it off and like put it somewhere mm-hmm. else Sure, because when something pops up, you're like, I need to check this out. Right. And then your mind is just yeah, totally off topic. Yeah. Um, but I was, yeah, I was thinking about technology a little more and I thought, you know, we spend so much time on social media mm-hmm. and it's so easy to just waste time. Right. And, and so I was thinking about that, but even more so the, uh, the influence that it could have on us mm. because on the internet, just kind of in general, people want to get our attention right and that's the main thing they're looking for right because if they can get our attention then it's going to increase something for them yeah whether it's more views likes money right whatever so their goal is to get our attention Mm -hmm. and if we do give our attention to certain things i think that can be a big obstacle Mm -hmm. or distract us um and uh yeah i was i was just thinking about even the people that call themselves influencers Mm -hmm. that's a thing now right like when i was teaching middle school band and you'd be like what do you want to do when you grow up like a youtuber yeah and then i I taught high school in the blue valley district for a while and then like influencer was a thing right it's like all of a sudden these career paths that these teenagers have yeah are i just want to influence people right and but that's a real thing that people do online yeah whether it's products or whatever. But I think it can be so easy to get caught up and believe some of those things Mm -hmm. that we see online. Yeah. No matter what, if if they're selling a product or talking about whatever, self-improvement, whatever kind of lens they're talking about that through. Yeah. uh, It can be easy for us to be convinced of other things that will help us to grow. Yeah. Or in the short term, 
make us feel like we're growing or right. bettering ourselves in some way. Mm. Uh, and then I think what happens because of that is kind of like a complacency mm-hmm. in our spiritual growth because we are distracted or thinking we're pouring into something else that's helping us to be better mm-hmm. when really it's it's not. Right. Um, and so that was one of the biggest things I thought about. And uh, and it, it, I guess one of the other obstacles, and it kind of goes with this, is like that sort of thing is like a quick fix. You, mm-hmm. Like you hear scientists or whatever talk about the dopamine hit that happens right. on social media. And God's word can sometimes feel like the opposite of that because it does take time to, for you to really sit and dwell on it and allow room for mm-hmm. the spirit to work. And, you know, we just not that long ago talked about Hebrews 4.12, that God's word is able to do a work in us. Right. But it also takes us to show up yeah. and allow that to happen and kind of expect that to happen. And, uh, and I, yeah, I just think where we are at and it's no, it's not going away. Yeah. It's just kind of increasing right. more and more. I feel like that, the technology, social media, that sort of thing is right. going to be more and more the obstacle or distraction right. that we have to look out for. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many things we could talk around uh, with social media, technology, mm-hmm. that kind of distraction. I mean, I think you, you mentioned influencers, and this is just sort of, I mean, it's kind of one of the terrible things about our world. I mean, it, it dovetails so nicely with what we're, we're talking about because we're we're going to talk in a minute about discipleship. Why is discipleship important? Well, it, you know, the, the reason we start here with these obstacles to growing spiritually is because, you, you know, Jesus calls us to discipleship, and you can't you can't lead where you haven't gone. Mm-hmm. But in the in the social media world, you know, that's not so true, right? Yeah. These influencers, you know, buy this bag or play this game mm-hmm. or watch this movie or d- go to this restaurant because that's where I go. Well, what have these people done that, you know, would lead us to believe that Mm -hmm. we should pay attention at all to them? Uh, Nothing besides, you know, gather whatever, tens of thousands of followers or hundreds of thousands or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. you know. And uh, they've gotten a lot of attention, you know. They've somehow... Uh, they found a way for people to click on their stuff, mm-hmm. and, uh, and and so uh, the, just distractions are are a big issue here with an obstacle to keep us from growing. Uh, maybe First John chapter two verse fifteen talks about these misplaced uh, affections when. Uh, it says, do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now, that's not doesn't say don't be a part of the world, right? Mm-hmm. It doesn't say, hey, you can't have anything to do with social media. Right. Or, or uh, there's some value there for the church and, and our influence mm-hmm. in that world, I, I think some. But, uh, but it does say, you, you know, that can't be your first thing right you know it can't be your first love it can't be what's most important to you and so these misplaced affections just those things that we uh chase after that we ought not can can be a a, an issue and uh i I think we talked a little bit on sunday about just the hurried pace of life and distractions again Mm -hmm. at the too hurried schedule can be a an issue there and and so something we ought to pay attention to and along those same lines i was thinking you know uh uh first timothy chapter 6 verse 10 talks about uh abundance and how abundance can sometimes uh, be an issue for us verse 10 in chapter 6 of first timothy says for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil it's uh, through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs and again this is one of those passages where we think you know the love of money am i you know that's somebody else right that's right. Uh, you know I, I don't i don't deal with that too much but we live in a, a culture that is so affluent, <laughs> yeah. you know, that that uh, just uh, we can sometimes trade 
rest. We've been talking a lot about rest, and a few weeks ago we talked about, hey, what does this true Sabbath rest look like, and mm-hmm. how do we chase, get, you know, strive for that rest? And if we're not careful, uh, the world and kind of some of those misplaced affections, those misplaced desires, can can lead us to trade recreation for rest. You know, and you think about if you've ever gone on vacation and come home more tired than when you left Mm -hmm. or you traded recreation for rest you know you you uh and and uh, we we go away to have this experience or to participate in this or to see this or to do this thing and we use our affluence we use our abundance to uh, create recreation opportunities uh, but we never really take time to to stop and to worship we trade recreation for rest or for worship and that that's a real issue uh and and on sunday i mentioned just sin right there you know uh uh, you know first john chapter one verse nine says we ought to confess our sins and uh and so sin keeps us away from growing keeps us is an obstacle to spiritual growth for sure but i think I'm, i'm with the writer of hebrews and maybe the most uh scary or glaring or most dangerous obstacle to spiritual growth is just uh not being diligent Mm -hmm. you know just being complacent and uh if you're not growing you know you're you're probably falling behind Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know you're not muscle you have to exercise it yeah you're not you're not using it at all and uh we talked sunday about you know creating some of those divine in, encounters you know divine enclosures rather and uh guarding you know that time when we have quiet time or personal time of worship whatever you want to describe that as but going back to god's word and making that a a priority in our life and when we just don't keep that enclosure guarded mm-hmm. um man you know the foot traffic will get to us eventually right. and it's so easy yeah. to allow these other things to happen so mm-hmm. yeah and so those obstacles can be uh can be dangerous and for me it's just complacency for mm-hmm. um for the believer anyway uh that we have to worry about so we go on and ask a, a few more questions here about um making disciples and we're going to kind of group question five and six here together uh question five says the author assumes that all christian readers should eventually become teachers not all people are called to be pastors but in what ways are all christian people called to be teachers and question six asks why is it important that every disciple of jesus become a disciple maker and just kind of spoiler alert right i think that's really the point of uh question five why Mm -hmm. why does everybody become a teacher well it's because we're we're supposed to be making disciples and so that in that way we're a teacher but well what do you think craig what what are we supposed to do how are we supposed to be teachers Mm -hmm. why is that disciple making process so important yeah one of the first things that came to mind when i thought about this uh earlier today after staff meeting was uh, how Jesus modeled um, his right. ministry. Right. Because you have the the three closest that he, yeah. you know, said, come up, do this with me. And they always followed him around. And I was like, it's like your, your best friends. Yeah. So I was kind of like paralleling this to things in our life. So uh, your best friend that you're like knows everything that's going on in your mm-hmm. life, that sort of thing. Right. Could be your family. Um, your kids, but right. then beyond the three, Jesus had the twelve that followed mm-hmm. him around and uh, were students of his, um, but they weren't brought in as close, you know. Right. So you have those relationships, uh, whether that's your small group, like I think about in our setting at church, a small group is a right. great thing like that. Uh, could be you know extended family that you would see often, even like someone like a neighbor or something like that, but people that you are around frequently. But then you get beyond that, and and Jesus had lots of people that followed him around, (laughs) but they just weren't let in as close. Yeah. And they weren't there to see the transfiguration, certain miracles, Mm -hmm. 
expl- he didn't explain everything to everybody. Yeah. But he still had influence in some way and still right. taught them and gave time to them. And we do have just different relationships and context scenarios in our life that we need to consider what those look like as far as being a teacher or a disciple maker. Um, and like I said, family, those are people that you're around all the time. You have neighbors, coworkers, small group, like we were talking about, even social media. Mm-hmm. That's an opportunity right. to use for God's kingdom sure, and to even teach and make disciples. I mean, that's right. It's, uh, we don't, normally see that very much you know right but it's a tool that could be utilized for that um and uh and one thing i was uh i was reminded of and i couldn't remember where i heard it so i looked it up but i think i it was in a sermon maybe one time so i I looked it up and the name uh os guinness kept coming up Mm -hmm. and he wrote a book it's either called the call or the calling but he talks about uh oh i wrote it down a primary or a general calling and then the Mm -hmm. secondary or specific. And I Mm -hmm. thought this was a good way to think about it too, because our primary or our general calling is to be followers of Christ that make disciples. Right. And so whatever we're going to do in life, that's first and foremost, and Mm -hmm. we need to look at our life through that lens. But then he talks about the secondary or specific calling. And we talked about that on a podcast recently, mm-hmm. what does that call in a ministry look like? Right. And how did we kind of get here? Yeah. But then for everybody, we all have mm-hmm. different skills and traits right. and things that we're good at that we're going to do on a daily basis. And we can also use those as an opportunity to teach and make disciples. But first and foremost, we're to follow Jesus and make disciples. And so it's, I think it's good to categorize it like that. That first and foremost, primarily, I'm a follower of Christ. And then whatever I do day to day and use those skills, they're going to be for the glory of God. But don't forget that primarily I'm a right. disciple of Christ. Yeah. And uh, and you think even at the end of Jesus' time here on earth, that was like, we talk about last words and right. how important that is. Right. And go yeah. and make disciples. Yeah. I'm in control. I'm reigning and ruling. Right. And so part of God's plan for us as people in his whole narrative of what the world is going towards is that he's going to work through us to make disciples. Mm. Like he, we have resources like God's word and the spirit, but our calling and our mission is to make disciples. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's his plan. I think it's easy to, to read that and say, go make disciples. And then we're like, Mm -hmm. okay, but we have to take that personally, that I'm yeah. part of the plan. Right. <laughs> right. And, uh, you know, you hear people talk like when we pray for missionaries and then mm-hmm. the person that's sitting there is like, I, I'm called to do this. And sometimes we fight against that. And, right. But like this one is like, no matter where we're at, right. we're going to be a missionary yeah. in making disciples and teaching. Yeah. And and that's like what you said the the heart of this message and then over and over throughout Hebrews like I was flipping through just what we've looked at so far and like the beginning of chapter 2 came to mind therefore we, we must pay closer attention mm-hmm. to what we have heard lest we drift away from it. Right. There's all these warnings of right. we really need to pay attention to this stuff. Yeah. And then it I feel like it kind of gets summed up in this little passage mm-hmm. we talked about was Right. Not only are we, there's a warning against drifting away, but we have a responsibility to know these things and practice right. them and live them out so that, like you said, we can lead other people yeah. to where we've been and they can follow us. Right. And it's the trickling down. Is, like, the amazing thing is Jesus had his 12. Right. He said, go make disciples. And mm-hmm. here we are today, Yeah. 2,000 years later on the other side of the world. Yeah. And they remained faithful to that call to be teachers right. and disciple makers and it worked right and it's still working <laughs> yeah right and yeah yeah we're, we are part yeah. of that continuation yeah yeah you're exactly right I mean the the answer here is why is disciple making so important well I mean you begin with as, as students of the book as followers of Jesus 
by the way, as a follower of Jesus, what does that mean? Well, I want to walk like Jesus walked. I want to do what Jesus did. Mm-hmm. I want to do what Jesus said. And Jesus said, go make disciples. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's the whole, why is it so important? Well, that, this is the mission. Mm-hmm. This is this is why the church exists. This is, you know, the, we, the great commission, we call it. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. And uh, I, I just think this is so... It's This is the mission. We call it the Great Commission, right? And then we have the Great Commandment, and that's really the motive, you mm-hmm. know, the Great Commandment to love God and to love others. And, and so uh, because we love others, you know, the most loving thing we can do is to help them grow in relationship with Jesus, is to make them disciples. And and really, as you look at the Great Commission, there's two commands there. And the first one is to make disciples. And mm-hmm. then there's three verbs that go with it, right? And so you, you talked around this a little bit, Craig. You said, oh, we think about missionaries, and we think I'm called to do that. And maybe we think, well, I can't, I can't move to Mm-hmm. you know, Honduras r- right now, you know, yeah. uh, this moment, I've got obligations and responsibilities. I can't make that happen this month, you know? And, uh, and we think, well, what am I supposed to do? Well, Jesus said, while you're going, mm-hmm. you know, it, go and make disciples that really in the Greek, it's while you're going, yeah. you know, so where you're at, while you're, uh, taking care of those daily responsibilities as you're raising your family, as you're serving in your workplace and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, going to work and shopping in the grocery store and, and coaching the little league team. And as you're doing these things that we do with our lives, you know, we're to be making disciples. And so teach them to obey uh, everything that Jesus said. And and the last part you mentioned as well, the second command, the great commission is this, it's a little word in the, Greek and it's translated a couple different ways and the ESV does a, a decent job with it when it says and behold mm. so this is a command to pay attention here again right yeah. to, to never forget that yes I'm asking you to do something Jesus said but I'm not leaving you mm-hmm. you know I'm, I'm, I'm giving you the firepower to do that I'm gonna be with you my spirit is with you you know I'm doing the heavy lifting go and make disciples and it's so important because it's the mission that Jesus left us with. The first thing is, if you say, I want to follow Jesus, then what he tells us to do, you know, that's important. Mm-hmm. It's, it's the deal. Right. It, it's, it's the goal. And, and so uh, discipleship is important because uh, Jesus, you know, he told us to make disciples. He left us with this mission. But, mm-hmm. uh, but secondly, it's the most loving thing we can do. I mean, it, mm-hmm. not even yeah. secondly, that's poor use of words right but uh the 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 motive is as important as the mission mm-hmm. and and maybe more so and uh the motive should be because you know we love others and we right. god loves us and mm-hmm. so we want to serve him and uh it, it's the whole point is to uh, to make disciples and so uh, we we ought to be all about that and uh certainly it's it's what we're striving to do here at Wallula Christian Church mm-hmm. so yeah it, it reminds me of the uh, the conversation back when we started in Revelation, being heavenly mm-hmm. minded. Right. I go back to that a lot. Yeah, sure. And that's part of being a disciple maker. Like you right. said, it's the most loving thing we can do because God has already mapped out right. what his plan is from now into eternity. Right. And we want people to be a part of that because we love them and care yes. for them. Yes. And so disciple making right needs to be part of that and remaining heavenly minded yeah so important Mm -hmm. and and uh i mean i don't want to go down a rabbit trail here but it's it's really important in the world we're living in because there are there are influences on the church and the you know uh and christianity that want to talk about just the here and now you know right yeah yeah that um you don't in other words they they wouldn't come out and say this probably right in this way but their point is we can't be so concerned with heaven that we forget the here and now it, that's true 
But the here and now really should be a byproduct of mm-hmm. our striving for that eternal rest. Yeah. Right? That that uh, it don't don't let anybody tell you that Jesus came for any other reason than to die on the cross, be raised from the dead, so that we might be raised in the same way with him, Mm -hmm. so that we might rest forever and ever and ever with him in his presence. That's why Jesus came. That's why he died. That's why he rose from the dead. And that's what the church ought to be about. Right. That's that's the story, mm-hmm. right? That's the gospel. And everything else is a byproduct. You know, should there should there be less less uh of, of all things evil? Should the Ten Commandments be followed in our world? Yes, because we're striving for that eternal rest. Mm-hmm. You know, should, should there be fewer murders and fewer rapes and fewer, you know, headlines on the evening news? Absolutely. Yeah. Because we're striving, you know, should there be more equality and justice? And yes, absolutely. But because we're striving for that eternal rest, that's mm-hmm. what it's about. And that's why Jesus came. And that's a whole nother soapbox and yeah. <laughs> sermon to preach, but and we'll get to it some day yeah. but that's enough for today yeah yeah so grow up everybody <laughs> right yeah let's do it all right thanks craig yep